do you want to do an introduction and we are live yes definitely i'd love an introduction uh prof thank you so much for joining us and uh, welcome to it uh, to another installment of our webinar series right here on oram pop and we are live on all our streaming platforms we are on a stream yard as it gives us the um can i say basics or rather uh the original uh, platform where we are broadcasting from uh, also on our youtube channel it is Oram Pop in on Facebook. It is at Oram Pop in on Twitter. It is uh, at in underscore health. My name is Vigan Gosi and thank you so much uh, for being with us uh, today. We are really, we really apologize uh, sincerely uh, for starting way ahead of time. It has been scheduled for one o'clock because, uh, but you know, we had some uh, difficult uh, or rather uh, technical difficulties behind the scenes uh, to try to bring you this uh, um, webinar. But without wasting any more time today, uh, we are joined uh, by Prof. Uh, Edward, who is going to take us through uh, their slides as we look at uh, mental health and mental health services. Uh, we'll be speaking to some of the services that are available um, when it comes to mental health for men who have sex with men and uh, transgender women, all key populations, um, as it were. And you are more than welcome to join in and uh, jot down some of your questions that you have for us um, and uh, send them through on the comment section below. I apologize because, you know, I'm from, you know, courtesy of home, so we'll be hearing Thank a lot you. of uh, cars in the background uh but right about now though let's take it to prof prof um take us away good afternoon thank you so much thank you so much for inviting me and i would like to say how happy i am to work at the orms popping clinics uh, i've been a couple of times now to the popping clinic in swane and to the popping clinic in ikuhuleni and i'm really proud and grateful that we are starting a pilot study uh, the pilot study has a difficult title, but it is called the Development and Evaluation of an Online Mental Health Coaching Intervention. Um, perhaps we can go to the next slide. Can you proceed the slides? Yeah, go to the next one. So mental health and key populations. We all know from our experience that, men, that key populations face many challenges difficulties within families, uh, sometimes school dropouts, employment challenges, there is abuse, there is community and religious marginalization, and sometimes sex work or other risk behaviors. And this is a picture of, of the rainbow and we are, I'm, I'm really proud that in South Africa there is a rainbow constitution recognizing all people's existence. Next slide. So when mental health and key population are put together, there is, there is a challenge that this abuse and ex exclusion can lead to psychological trauma. And this trauma can manifest as depression, anxiety, self-harm, substance use, lack of self-esteem, and other risky situations. Next slide. So what to do about it? Where, where do we go? And, and we, we know there is a, a need for mental health well-being support, but there is very limited public health services for psychological trauma, depression, or even self-harm. And who here in the audience knows where to seek help in public health facilities? So we at the Popping Clinics have been thinking that we would like to train lay mental health coaches. Next slide. And we refer to this as a pilot mental health study. Researchers, they like to do studies and then publish reports. And through publications, they are able to get more support to start a program. And our hypothesis is that we can improve mental health issues among MSM at Orem's Popping Clinics and then we will also improve PrEP and ART adherence. Next slide. Think about two challenges, HIV and mental health. And here you see them separate, separately, but they are in fact not separate. They are close together. Next slide. They are really what is called interdigitated. So while there is an epidemic of HIV, there's also 
a, an epidemic of mental health challenges. And we need to uh, look and work on mental health well-being among our clients, among our, among our friends, to in, in order to improve the HIV program. That is our basic uh, standpoint. Next slide, please. So in the past couple of months, we have conducted four focus group discussions, two in Ikerelini and two in Swane. And we had topics that went about mental health, HIV prevention, the treatment gaps, both in Johannesburg and Pretoria. And, that, and then we did an analysis of what our findings were. And we, we came up with a framework for an intervention. And I'm going to take you through this framework. It's a little bit complicated. Next slide, please. And the, the font is very small, but, but bear with me. I talk you through it. In the left-hand side, you see, you see the components of what we think is important that has to go in the intervention. We will base it on the Friendship Bench. That is a program from Zimbabwe. When the Friendship Bench refers to when people start talking to each other on a bench, but you can also talk to each other on a WhatsApp or talk to, talk, talk, talk to each other on Facebook, you create connection. And when you train lay counselors to provide that connection, you start offering problem-solving therapy. The core elements of the intervention are peer-led. So they are led by the, the, the core workers, the, peer, the trained peer leaders. Status neutral refers to that it is, doesn't matter whether somebody is HIV positive, HIV negative. And it is combined both individual and group sessions. And there is an element of M health, mobile health. These elements go into the green area where we will work on personal behaviors and psychological skills and offer interpersonal support and involve communities to strengthen capacities. And on the right hand side, we strengthen positive coping, more self-care, and therefore ensure PrEP uptake and ART adherence so that viral suppression improves. So that is the framework. That is the theory behind what we are offering. And, and the only thing that you have to remember from this slide that there is a theory behind it. Now we go to the next slide. Next slide. So in these focus group discussions, the consensus was that the participants, they supported the adaptation of the friendship bench. They clearly said, we don't want to sit on a bench, but we like to be connected to each other. And the, it was felt that when we have the friendship bench, we could break up silos and offer an integrated program. And yeah, that's very good when you want to ask questions in, in, the, in the meantime. So we are encouraged um, the last bullet of my slide is this, yeah, the Im Im improved service engagement, um, including online and in-person formats. Let's come to, go to the next slide. So we agreed that we would adopt the friendship bench. Here is the bench in Zimbabwe, but in, in South Africa, we will use not a bench, we will use a virtual platform. We will train lay mental health, Men, coaches and we offer the mental health coaching online or face to face in four individual and in four group sessions the four group sessions will always be face to face and we have now this month is starting a pilot study of 20 clients and we like to learn from the pilot study so the pilot study is only for three months and then after three months we will interview the clients we will interview the coaches we will learn and listen to people and then we hope to improve what we are offering. Last one, or next slide. Yeah, this is the team. It's a team led by Jackie Pinar uh, and my colleague Goodman Sibeko, who is in Cape Town, and my colleague Donna Perario in, in uh, the United States. 
And Dixon Chibanda is the genius. He is the psychiatrist who came up with the friendship banjo idea. Daniela is a, a statistician and an epidemiologist, and he has a picture of me. So I'm open to questions now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, and I don't know, Happy, if you can uh, really um, help us there with uh, questions. I haven't gotten any on my side because I only have um, the screen to Prof. Uh, professor's um, um, presentation, uh, but Prof, let's uh, maybe perhaps take uh, you know uh, you know and look at or rather look at some of the uh, points that you spoke to, um, especially about key populations really needing uh, mental health services. You know, as 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 a response, then you know you come up with the friendship bench. Is the friendship bench the only? out there, especially when we look at, you know, pop in taking on the project or uh, personally taking on uh, these uh, kind of services, are they the only ones? And so far, um, have you seen a response or a positive response uh, when uh, you take these services to uh, the people? Well, that, that's a very good question. And we often we often do a lot. That, that is, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really admiring popping clinics in, in South Africa offering so much already connection. But what we like to do mm -hmm. in this study, try to find out how we can best connect to people. Yeah. What what topics what topics are, are really on people's mind? And mm -hmm. is it is it being jobless or is it being rejected? Or how then can you find solutions for that these major challenges? And there are tons of there are tons of self help and there are tons of of programs that offer connections. But what we like to find out with the with the Orm teams is what is the best way of doing that, and then perhaps modifying the online learning so the existing online learning can perhaps be improved. And that's what researchers always want to do. They want to take something what is either non-existing on something that is existing, then see how it can be improved, and then provide a better version of it, and then try to get funding for it to roll out a better version. I, I hope I have yeah. answered your question. Yes, you have. Uh, yes, you have. Let's let's look at uh, some of these challenges, Prof. Uh, that perhaps maybe you know uh, key populations would then be experiencing. You saying then what would be the topics that would uh, be delved into in a more deeper um, perspective? Uh, maybe you know, and and I think it, it. Don't you think that it might be only limiting if you are only offering it uh, remotely or rather digitally? And let's look at remote areas because also I think uh, they are more challenged um, as we were is we are in cities and i think we have the advantage of technology to go online to speak to a friend or to speak to a counselor that is uh put to help us with our mental health issues but what about remote areas then you know areas where you know key populations who reside there don't necessarily have access to internet or have access to cell phones how, how do you go about responding to that as a challenge <laughs> you are you are, <laughs> you are asking, asking the toughest questions but these are very good questions <laughs> if you yeah. don't ask them you 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 basically you basically not you're not with your feet on the ground and you you dream mm -hmm. of, you, you remain in the ivory tower and I think you're absolutely yeah. right. The the, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is to reach out to the areas where people are most in need of information, and I I'm admiring Orem's mm -hmm. outreach mm -hmm. mobilizations. Go mobilize. Go into the hotspots. Go mm -hmm. to networks. Go to clients. Yeah. friends of friends. Yeah. Offer self testing, get people to take a mm -hmm. self test. Let, let, when people test negative or positive, it doesn't matter. But then try to connect to them to the popping clinic. Mm -hmm. now you can mm -hmm. you cannot start hundreds of popping clinics in South Africa, but you that principle mm -hmm. that principle yeah. can be promoted. And the principle that you yeah. reach out, reach out to to peers and, and start normalizing. Have you taken an HIV test? Yes, of course. No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I haven't taken an HIV test recently. Have you, do you know mm -hmm. about prep? Do you know about prep taking? And so you, you mm -hmm. try to interest people about the basics. But then often, if, if you don't offer something extra, then even if people walk away with a bottle of pills and it makes a noise, they say, oh, no, they're not going to yeah. take these pills. They're not going to take these pills mm -hmm. because their mind is somewhere else. And yeah. that, that extra connection, that extra connection is what we try to work out in this uh, friendship. And the 
that some of it can perhaps be done through WhatsApp, which is a very cheap mm -hmm. way of communicating. Mm -hmm. People need mm -hmm. to feel that they belong to a community, that, that it is okay to mm -hmm. say, look, I find it difficult to take my, my prep. I, I, I'm not mm -hmm. always not always successful in taking my prep. Yeah. It's yeah. really not, I forget, I stay over with friends, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, what do I do if I have forgotten a couple of days, can I restart? Mm -hmm. So you need, that, you need that communication. And <clears throat> Back to that, to the theory, if you could say that, well, it's not only talking about prep and ART, yeah. they're actually underlying, no. underlying traumas and underlying yeah. rejections. That if we can go deeper with people, they may actually feel better connected. And when you're better connected, mm. you may also do a better job in taking your pills. So mm. Mm. We, we hope that we can make a start and um, through, through training lay counselors lay coaches potentially offer something that can be scaled that is the hope yeah most definitely um i and i, I agree with you there because then it, it means that prof we uh, there needs to be a uh, a deeper dive into these issues because like you said it's not only about taking the pill uh, but it goes beyond that so then education uh, needs to be given or other training is to be given to be able to equip other people that are uh, other uh, um, clients or, or, or peers who, who are interested in, in, in the project and, and also to to really give them uh, the service at the end of the day um, I also want to touch on the objective from especially when we borrow from Zimbabwe because that's the way it, it, it started you know you look at the kind of successes that Zimbabwe has had uh, with the friendship uh, with the friendship uh, bench. Maybe perhaps maybe take us uh, through those highlights. So, you know what have uh, they achieved? What were they able to achieve in the space of uh, you know the project or in the space, the space of a study uh, when it was incepted until until now? Ah, that's a that's an excellent question. I uh, thank you for that. The, the, that is years of work, um, mm -hmm. often outside a hospital. Where, where people either learned their status or they had lost somebody. And the way that Dixon Chibanda approaches was he, he trained mm -hmm. grandmothers, people who are often around the clinic or who would accompany a, a patient. And he helped the grandmother to, to say, um, come just listen to a person, listen what's on, on a person's mind. What, what, what is bothering you? What, 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 is, what is actually making you down? How can you ask questions that are not non-judgmental? And that that did happen on the bench, and that did happen, that provided connectivity. And it was then studied that these people who had been connected and they felt heard, they actually started to be happier. And when they when you become happier and you become a sort of more whole person, you were able to, to solve a a application letter that you hadn't written for many years and then actually found a job or you were able to confront a family member and say look it's not fair how you treat me and so it is building that that resilience in people through through connection that clearly was successful in zimbabwe it hasn't been it hasn't been tested among msm populations um when we started discussing it in, in johannesburg and in swane the, the um, people also it's new it, it's, we have to learn from it do, do people are people comfortable to share their their inner thoughts i mean are you are you is the is the confidentiality ensured is the coach is it really helpful so we while we have these great ideas we should also be a bit mindful that in 3 months we like to learn from from you, from the teams, what do people feel? And, and, and it would be totally fine to say, no, this is not the way we want to go. Then we have to come up with something new. So we're really having an open mind and we're not prescriptive in this is the best way of doing things. This is how we like to try and then also measure if people do, do it better, take their medication better, feel happier, are satisfied.
and it's 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 quite interesting because then uh prof so mental health is not uh you know or it shouldn't be isolated from hiv uh from uh prep from because also it you know uh people who are taking these medication or especially ARVs are dealing with a certain stigma actually even prep um so you know when you have uh an intervention like the friendship bench or you know such mental health service then you are also responding uh, uh to that but i wanted to talk about then having the physical bench that personally are we going to be able to see us having a physical bench like in Zimbabwe how it started when somebody just comes and said obviously they are uh, more uh, qualified or perhaps maybe trained in the field of mental health you know indeed or somebody that is going through mental health uh, uh, challenges or are we just going to see it only being online or being digital or being uh, on outset I mean on outreach um, when when the team is taking the service to the people yeah, I think it, the friendship bench, the, the real bench, I think think about it as a metaphor. I mean, that's that's something that worked outside hospitals, but in Johannesburg and, and, and in Pretoria, we are going to use the connection, whether it is WhatsApp, whether it is face-to-face, -face, whether it is being in a, in a small group, we, we got to train people's ability to listen. And it's basically when you become a better listener, you hope to make an impact on a person's life. That's what that is the skills we like to train in, in counselors. And you can listen by by yeah. only sometimes giving a small nudge like go on or or how was that for you when that happened or tell me more about it. And then let a person come let a person be confident that he he or she can say what, what is really on a person's mind. And that is that is the skills we like to train. And you don't need a bench for that. Okay. That, can, that can happen. No. That can happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's look at uh, treatment. Two last questions, and we'll let you go. Let's look at treatment uh, because I, I think then when somebody's mental health, um, you know, uh, situations are dealt with, then they respond better to treatment. Um, and let's 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 look at you know if 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 then people are not dealt with, you know, when their mental health is not dealt with, do we see a lot of resistance when it comes to them taking treatment because they are dealing with a lot. So you are telling me that I'm HIV positive, or you're telling me that I'm dealing with. With this kind of illness on top of that you want me to take my treatment but i'm dealing with so much mental health i'm dealing with depression and anxiety you know is it better when they are given mental health services and then um come to their health holistically i i the way these programs work everywhere in the world that is it is so important to suppress viral load when you when you test positive that the earlier you can start the better and sometimes people first have to start with tb treatment or take also prophylactic tb treatment and the the, the burden of taking treatment is already on their on their minds the shortly after starting treatment or shortly after starting prep one can be supported by further mental health coaching by further and it is better to think about it like well-being coaching there, there will be people who have a severe who have a more severe depression and you then need to refer those clients to either medication therapy or to more professional help but we are aiming to make an impact on the on actually many of us including you, me, we all have issues on our mind that if we can, if we are confident that we can talk about it in a more, in a more casual way, our days become happier. That is what we try to promote. That's what we try to mean with mental health yeah. well-being. Yeah. Yeah, I've got you. And I think, you know, um, I think Jackie at one of the webinars spoke about mental health being the next uh, uh, sort of like pandemic that we, we have to deal with it. And uh, it's quite interesting that uh, studies like these are in place. Uh, Prof, I really appreciate your time in closing. Perhaps maybe tell us, remind us when is the study uh, starting and uh, perhaps maybe tell us what would then uh, be achieved with the study as we close. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I just received an email. I just received an email that the study has started today in in Swane. So the two first clients were enrolled, and um, that means they have participated in a survey. And after a couple of weeks, we will select from the respondents in that survey.
we we select only 10 clients from Tswane and 10 clients from Ikurileni to go into this friendship bench online coaching. And that's so that the real intervention will start by half August, will run for eight weeks up to half October. And at the end of October, we will um, get our findings together. We share our findings back with the communities. And by that time, we also have hope to have the formal big grant from the NIH to study this for during a period of three years. This is only meant to be a pilot study to, to, to oil the wheels, to make everybody understand what we're aiming towards to. And when we get the big fund, January, maybe February, we start in kickoff, have a big kickoff meeting, and we will be talking seriously about mental health interventions. So we, we're here for the long run. I hope you see me uh, quite regularly for the next, um, well, maybe seven years. Uh, you never uh, <laughs> know. Uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm incredibly proud of what, what, what Orem is doing. I'm really happy that I've yeah. joined Orem and that, that I have such a good feel and, and response from the team. Thank you so much. Most definitely, Prof. Thank you so much. Definitely, we are looking forward to having you for the next seven years. Uh, and uh, the wheels are oiled, so we definitely see the work. Uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, but if you've just joined us, you've missed it. Uh, Prof. Edward was giving us the, the round on what mental health looks like in South Africa and uh, what is, uh, you know, the intentions of the Friendship Bench and how far it's willing to go. So make sure that you uh, check out this episode uh, of the webinar. And uh, until we see you again, Again, uh, have yourselves a beautiful afternoon. Happy streaming. Thank you. Thank you, Happy, for uh, the behind the scenes. Really appreciate it. All righty. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.